Cameroon said Thursday that at least 12 people have been killed in new attacks by Boko Haram in Dalak, a fishing island on Cameroon's northern border with Chad and Nigeria. Military officials say troops have been deployed to stop more incursions and attacks by the Nigeria-based insurgent group. Regional officials say the 12 cops were discovered by civilians. Government troops say civilians have escaped to safer locations on the island. The military says ongoing sporadic attacks make it difficult to establish a total number of casualties. Midijewara Bakali, the governor of Cameroon's far north region where Dalak is located, said this week's wave of attack is devastating to the psychological and physical well-being of civilians in Dalak who have not experienced Boko Haram atrocities for more than a year. He said he has asked the military to immediately collaborate with local militias and put an end to the infiltration which killing and looting jihadists have been carrying out in the lack this week. Cameroon said that the deadliest Boko Haram attack in Dolak occurred on June 10, 2019, when about 20 soldiers and 16 civilians were killed in an incursion the military said involved at least 300 heavily armed Boko Haram fighters. Cameroon said close to 90 jihadists were killed in the attack and eight were taken into custody. Cameroon said that other attacks, which fewer casualties have been reported monthly since June 2019 attack. Cameroon President Julius Madabio officially opened parliament on Thursday with a call for unity and dialogue. But as in the two previous settings, since the June 24 general elections, the opposition All People's Congress APC party boycotted the session. Chano Ba is Sierra Leone's new Minister of Information. He tells me that President Bio acknowledged what he calls logistical limitations during the elections and called for the establishment of a committee to review the polls. His Excellency the President's appeal for peace and national cohesion is acknowledgement of logistical challenges that probably affected some of the operations of the Electoral Commission and other election management bodies, while making very clear, and this is important, that those challenges do not in any way but have affected the overall outcome of the results. But he said he's listened to them and is going to put forward an elections review committee to be chaired by no less a person than our distinguished vice presidents, but will include civil society, development partners, and a wide array of citizens to review both the legal framework on how we conduct our elections and the recommendations that have been made. Of course, uh, Minister, I, I think the president's speech was in reference to the opposition APC members of parliament, who I understand also boycotted the session. So... What do you say about that? Well, it's important to note that following the last elections, our friends and siblings, I should say, in the opposition party have decided that the way they're going to protest was that they will not participate in the entire governance process. They have instituted what they are referring to as a boycott. So they have not been in parliament, except, of course, for one of them, the Honorable Mame Bangura, who was proudly in his partisan colors and who said that, no, even if we have disagreements, we should seek to resolve these disagreements through the laid down procedures in our constitution. That's what the president was referring to today. So, of course, I think we acknowledge our family, our folks, our friends in the opposition. And the president was saying to them that we have to act with political maturity. We have to think about the peace, the stability and the democracy of our nation. And it was inviting them to come to the table and let's have a conversation. Let's move our country forward. You cannot take your toys and go home. This is a governance process and you have to be part of it. Chan Ba is the Sierra Leone's new Minister of Information. He was speaking with us from Freetown. Kenya has offered to send a thousand police officers to Haiti and lead a multinational effort to support the Haitian police. Fred Omolo 
is a journalist based in Nairobi. He tells viewers Douglas Umpuga that most Kenyans were surprised by the announcement since Kenya currently has its own security problems. Well, there was a sense of uh, bewilderment because we've been having uh, our own security challenges within the country, especially if you consider the protests and uh, all the chaos that has been happening here over the last two, three months. So there was a sense of bewilderment. Why deploy uh, our troops all the way to Haiti, contain the situation there when we have our own issues here in the country? We also have our troops deployed in uh, Somalia since uh, 2011. They've never left the place. They're still stuck there in Kismayu because the Somalian government itself has requested that we continue staying there. So if we can't contain the situation in Somalia, if we can't contain the situation here in Kenya, why are we looking at, you know, international issues? Why is Haiti itself has neighbors that have very strong armies? The U.S. is there and uh, all the, na- the Dominican Republic is there. Despite all that, some other nations are hailing Kenya's uh, intention to send troops to Haiti, including the United States. What do you make of that? The United States, in a way, has been uh, aligning itself with a new government, the current government that has been in office for the last 10 months. All uh, the signals that the current administration has been sending is that they want to re-engage with their old partners. Keen observers of the Kenya's foreign relations uh, history understand that over the last uh, 20 years, 15 years, Kenya has really moved east. And when I say east, I mean China, in terms of loans, in terms of partnerships, in terms of aid, in terms of infrastructure development. And that really left the U.S. out in the cold, the France, U.K., the Western axis. So right now the new administration is kind of trying to re-engage them. So any move that looks like it's contributing to that Western sphere of influence, that Western uh, system of governance from a former partner who moved away is kind of a plus in their eyes. And possibly that's why they are hailing the move as positive. That was Fred Omulo, a journalist based in Nairobi. He spoke with viewers Douglas Umpuga from Kisumu, Kenya.